Hi, so today we're going to be looking at the SBL Brainworks Plugin Alliance Iron Compressor, which has recently come out. And I have to say, I'm really excited about this compressor because it just sounds fantastic. Um, the kind of music that I mix and master is primarily jazz, progressive rock, some world music, that kind of area of music. And for that sort of music, this is one of the best sounding mastering and bus compressors I've ever heard. It's amazing. And it's also great on single instruments. Uh, really versatile, has a, a way of adding a, a really nice solidity to the low end and at the same time adding a beautiful sheen to the to the mids and the top end. Just fantastic. So we're going to have a good look at all the parameters on the front and and what they do and then we'll play through some music and have a listen to what it sounds like. Um, if you want to just hear the music uh, examples then you can forward through to that part of the music um, but we're going to start by having a close look at what it has to offer on the on the front panel so let's have a look so here we are with the SPL Brainworks Plugin Alliance iron compressor now this is a stupendous sounding compressor uh, I have most of the compressors software compressors out there I've heard most of them and I've heard many hardware compressors and this thing just sounds really great I have to say Brainworks have taken their component modeling to a, a whole higher level with this one it just has a, a wonderful sheen to the top end the sound stage is fantastic it's got that weight that um, really great compressors have that really the only other compressor that I've heard which to me sounds as good as this for a mastering bus compressor in software is the uh, Ivory Acoustica Audio Ivory 4. Um, the Ivory 3 to me is nothing like the Ivory 4. The Ivory 4 is really fantastic sounding uh, and so is this in quite a different way. So let's have a look at this. Uh, I'm going to look at all the controls and then we'll listen to some examples with different settings. So if you just want to hear the examples you can jump ahead forward in the in the video to, to find those um, but I'm going to start by going through all the controls and explaining what they do and why they may be useful so let's start here where we've got the attack and release as you'd expect but it looks at first glance like there's only a few stops here and they click their click stops like the hardware but actually because of this rectifier circuit that you can also change you've got a lot more variation on attack and release because that's what these different circuits do they change the release and attack times so I'm gonna just have a look now at a chart that shows what they do so it's a little confusing which is why they've given you a chart and I'm hoping eventually I'll commit this to memory but until then I'm gonna have this chart handy what I've actually done is saved out this single page so I don't have to scroll through the whole menu every time but if we look here if we move this all the way over to the 1MF Geranium setting then the attack control goes from the fastest being 0.1 of a millisecond which is ultra fast to 50 milliseconds at its slowest and the release at that same setting of Geranium 1MF goes from 100 milliseconds at its fastest to 250 at its slowest whereas if I click at the next one along the 2MF you can see it's different because it from 1 millisecond which is a significantly slower to 70 milliseconds for the attack 300 to 900 for the release and if I go to LED where it is now then its fastest attack you can get is 3 milliseconds up to 220 which is very long and release um, 600 is the fastest you'll get and 5 seconds being the longest which is very very long and what makes it confusing is that when you go to the next one along silicon instead of it getting faster longer still what happens is it jumps back to being faster again somewhere between these two you've got 0.5 of a millisecond at its fastest attack up to only 12 so it's not really halfway between these two it's just a different characteristic different ratio of changes between these clicks going from 0.5 of a millisecond to 12 and the release going from 80 to 300 and then when you go to the next one along it gets faster rather than slower and faster still so it kind of 
at the halfway point, it kind of goes in reverse. It jumps back to fast and gets faster and faster and faster. So the fastest settings are actually, um, it's a little confusing. The very fastest attack is over here, but the next fastest attack is over here. So all I can say is, yeah, that's obviously the, the way the hardware is. Why they did it that way with the hardware, I, I can't really imagine, except maybe there's some technical reason why it had to be in that order. I, I don't know why, but... Anyway, this is what the hardware is like, and so this is what they've done with the software, and uh, it does require a chart to kind of know what you're doing, um, which is, I could you guess you could say, would definitely be a downside to this compressor if it didn't sound so great. Uh, so it sounds good enough that I'm, to be honest, if it didn't sound great, I just wouldn't even consider something like this, working with something like this, but because it does, uh, it's really worth either having this around or uh, as a reference chart or, or learning how it goes. So, yeah. Um, now, moving on here. So there's a big range of uh, attack and release characteristics. So now here we've got the threshold control, which is as you'd expect. There is no ratio because it's a very mood type compressor, which means that the uh, ratio gets higher the further past the threshold the signal goes. So it's a variable ratio, um, so there's no rational control. But um, you do have something, not a ratio control, but you do have something here that does control, in a sense, the ratio. You have the two bias, which basically the higher you, you make this, the more it compresses. So it is actually changing the ratio, but not really, it's not a ratio control as such. But it does give you the ability to just really go for heavier compression or middle or, or less, uh, more mild compression. And that's all great. Um, now we come along to the next thing which I find a little frustrating. You've got your input and output controls and the input control is, is fair enough. You can, you can use this to, to drive the input or if you prefer you can turn it off and just use other gain staging to do that. Um, and that's fine. But here, the output control is the, the part I have a problem with. And the reason is because it's in 2 dB steps, and that's much too much. Uh, even 1 dB or half a dB in mastering is too much when you're A-Bing something to really make an accurate judgment as to how well, how, how the compressor is working, whether it's doing what you want it to do. Um, you know, when you A-B, even a small difference in volume, especially with compressors, uh, makes it very hard to hear it and judge it accurately as to whether it's really uh, controlling things the way you want it to. So that for me is a problem and I don't really understand why the hardware would have such huge steps. Uh, maybe there's some technical reason why they had to, but certainly with the software you could get around that. And I really hope that Brainworks adds an extra control which they could easily do either up here or down here, which just gives you an unstepped uh, output control. I have actually uh, emailed them and asked them to do that, and if you agree with me, I, I hope you do the same. Because with that addition, it would be pretty much a perfect plugin. So, what else have we got here? Um, we have um, sidechain EQ. Now, this is a, an interesting feature. Um, what it does is it applies a quite complex EQ curve to the sidechain, which changes the tonal characteristics of the compressor quite a bit. And I like this feature a lot, although a bit like this, it's, it's, it's kind of a little confusing, um, but I'll explain why I don't think that's a problem in a minute. Let me just uh, find the actual um, chart for you. The one in the in the manual is actually um, really s hard to see. It's very thin lines, so thin that it's really difficult to see what the different, uh, what, which different uh, characteristic you're looking at. But this here's one with thicker lines that makes it much easier to see, and so you can see what the different presets do. So if we look at what they're calling presets here, is actually that's EQ one, is preset one, and you can see that. That one, for example, up at around a sort of, I guess that's around 800 hertz, um, it's boosting quite a bit, which means that the compressor is going to react more to these fre to this frequency area. And here, a bit above 2K, <coughs> is a huge cut, which means in theory the compressor is going to react a lot less here, which 
And same thing with the upper frequencies, it's reacting less, which means that you should, in theory, get more presence. Maybe the vocal would come out more. So if you needed to um, accentuate the vocal a little in a mastering situation, that could be useful. Uh, and each of these curves does something slightly different. Some of them I wouldn't find really very useful at all, and others I could find useful. But here's the thing. I don't actually find, trying these out, that you get the expected result by, by looking at this. It's not like working with a dynamic EQ or a multiband compressor where you really you know what you're going to get when you uh, change the side chain. Here it's much more subtle. But that's a good thing, because just going back again to the plug-in, um, what I find is that I'll set things up so that they sound really good, and then I'll click through these different EQ curves and see what I get. And sometimes I, they don't particularly improve the sound, and sometimes I get some re a really magic that will happen on one of them. And it, it's very subtle, and it affects everything in a subtle way to do with the sound stage, and. Um, the tonal qualities of the compressor and, and obviously the music coming through it, but it's 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 complex and subtle. It's it's not as straightforward and obvious as, you, as at all to, to, as what I find as that graph would make you think. Um, but nonetheless, they are really interesting. And sometimes I found just clicking through, I'll hit one. It's like wow, that that's magic. Uh, again, it's a subtle. It'll be a subtle difference, but it will be. Um, something that really improves the sound. Um, but again, you know, that adage of um, in mastering and also in mixing that in, if something you try doesn't definitely improve some, what you're hearing, then you shouldn't use it. So I, I give it a try and if I get something really magic, I'll, I'll use it and otherwise I'll, I'll leave it off. So I think that covers all this area here and then in the middle we have um, this here, which is a um, an EQ, I've modelled um, really beautiful sounding pass passive EQ, <coughs> which I guess is a high pass. Sorry, not high pass, a high shelf. Um, but it's very subtle. I mean, it's not like putting a high shelf on. It's not like you hear an EQ at all. It just gives a very subtle but beautiful sheen to the high end, and also increases the low end as well, but in a subtle way really nice. It does not sound like you've switched an EQ in at all. And here, that rolls off the top end. Um, not something I'd ever use, but somebody might find it useful if they had a, a harshness problem, perhaps. Um, I'd probably deal with that in a different way, but nonetheless it's there. Um, but this air bass, as they call it, I really like that a lot. Here we've got an interesting thing here. We've got um, the ability to bypass um, automatically as you're listening. If you don't like having to click these because you'd like to be sitting back and listening, um, then you can set this to switch between bypassed and engaged um, at a time interval, so whatever number of seconds you want, or set it to, to your host so that it will change every bar or whatever you like. Not something I'd actually use personally, but I can imagine it, some people might find it really useful. I, I mean, I just like to do it do it by hand, but if you were in a listening position where you had to, you wanted to sit back and listen, listen back, uh, and you couldn't reach here easily, or for whatever other reason you didn't want to have to be doing this, it could be really useful. So that's an added thing. This links the side chains. So um, if uh, you have it linked, then um, a single side chain signal will drive both sides of the compressor and you you get a very uh, locked stereo in true stereo image um, whereas if you unlink it um, you'll sometimes get a wider sound which can be good sometimes um, but you could also possibly get some uneven movement in in the sound stage as the two sides react differently because they've got two different uh, side chain signals. So it's something that can be useful in some situations, but you know it may not necessarily be, be useful. Not sure if I mentioned this, it's just what the VU meter reacts to. Um, I've got it on gain reduction, uh, but you can also set it to the uh, to these two as well, which I, I just wouldn't find that useful, but some people might. Now, that covers everything in the actual uh, original hardware. 
So now just moving on here, um, this is in fact added by Brainworks um, and it adds some really great extra functions. Starting with this, now as I said before, uh, Brainworks have done a masterful job of component modeling and I have to say, you know, I never heard anything uh, that sounded as good as this uh, component modeled. The only ones that sounded as good to me were the Acoustica ones and this sounds as good as those now so fantastic work by Brainworks on this. Um, but what they've done here is they've actually um, given you many different examples of the same compressor, the same hardware, because with real hardware with real components you get natural variation in the components so every single component will naturally vary from one unit to the next. That's a lot of components um, that can vary. Now although the tolerances on these units is very high you still get variation and so no two units will sound identical and the two channels won't sound identical either. And that's what they have given you here. They have given you random variations 20 different ones so effectively on every component in it so effectively you've got 20 different units here to choose from. Um, and that is pretty amazing and I have listened to them all and actually they do sound different. It's subtle, it really is subtle but nonetheless some of them do have a little bit more punch or a little bit of a tighter bottom end or a bit of a bigger bottom end or a really smooth sheen on the top end. Um, they are all a little different and the sound stage is slightly different so really worth checking these out um, and it's a great added feature. I mean, they all sound really great, but there are some subtle differences that are worth going through and, and, um, and listening to. This will switch, give you a random set of channels. Um, this will mean that both channels are identical and so forth. So, moving on to here, this links the parameters on the left and the right side, which you may or may not want. This moves it to MS mode. Um, oh, by the way, this parameter linking has nothing to do with the side chain linking. That's a different thing. It just links means when you move one side, it moves the other, or not. MS, not something that I use really often with compressors, but on occasion, it's incredibly useful. So, really great that they've got that. Um, and for creative effects, it can be really useful, actually. But for mastering, it's something I'd use all that often, but occasionally, it can be great for widening a mix in a special sort of way that, it, that, that sometimes a mix needs. Um, or sometimes controlling something like overheads that are panned widely or some other element that's widely panned without needing wanting to necessarily control the center in the same way uh, can be useful on occasion. Here we've got headroom. Now this is a useful control. What this does is it, it increases the um, amount of drive going into the compressor and at the same time pulls the volume down so that you don't get an increase in volume but you get more drive into it um, without having to change these which is really handy um, and, and, or you can decrease it so without actually having to change any volume control so that's super useful and like I said if they just add an output volume here without steps it'd be totally complete set of controls um, and high pass filter, of course, uh, really useful in these days, you know, it's from my thinking it's it's pretty much essential. Um, and this can of course be added to the sidechain EQs here. So if you had a sidechain EQ you liked but you didn't quite like what it was doing to the low end, you can always add this to that to say pull back in some more low end if you lost too much of it here. So really useful with or without in combination with this. Um, Monomaker, which is BX's um, well-known uh, Monomaker, which monos out the bass to whatever frequency range you want. Super useful. Uh, stereo width, again BX's proprietary stereo width control, which is probably the most transparent one I've heard, certainly amongst the most transparent, um, as long as you don't take it up above say 120, use it subtly and it can subtly widen the mix without sounding artificial. Really great. And then of course, as is expected these days, a parallel mix control. So yeah, uh, uh, apart from a, uh, an unstepped uh, output control, it's got every everything you could ever want and fantastic uh, 
perfectly uh, versatile compressor. So let's now listen to it on uh, a mix. I'm going to on a, a track which I'm going to bypass to begin with and then what I'm going to do actually is use these to bypass it. So when it's white it's bypassed and when it's yellow it's in. So we'll hear it bypass and then I'm going to switch it in and you can have a listen to what it's doing on these settings which is uh, a pretty slow attack. That attack is about um, 70 milliseconds here uh, and the release here is about uh, 300 so let's see what that sounds like. So I'm going to start bypassed. So right away <clears throat> there was more punch in the low end and the low end got deeper and more solid um, when it was engaged um, in a really beautiful way. And um, I have to say I've not heard a compressor that sounds like this before. It really sounds fantastic. Um, really gives it that expensive, um, really polished sound. Um, right, you know, right out of the the gates, and also the high end and and the and the mids really sound beautiful. Uh, if you notice when the tom, I'll play it again in a minute. When the tom fill comes around, it just gives it this beautiful gloss and sheen. Um, and when the cymbals at the end are playing again, it gives it a beautiful, nice uh, sheen. So I'm going to play through one more time and just listen out for how it's working with the kick. Um, and the mid-range and, and high-end So yeah, sounds just uh, lovely with it switched in. Um, I'll, uh, I switched it out of the end there just so you could hear that tom roll and the um, and the end symbol without it, which just don't have that same glossy smoothness that they had with it with it switched in. So now let's try some other settings. What I'm, I'm going to um, slow down the attack a bit more. Um, and I think what I might do is just give it a bit more threshold and see what we get from that. I'm going to turn up the tube bias so we get a bit more compression going on too. And let's let's see what we get with that. <laughs> <laughs> 
interesting difference there. Um, I found that with the slow, even slower attack here, because that's up around sort of 220 milliseconds, uh, it's too, it was too slow for me and I wasn't getting the tightness and punch in the low end that I wanted. Uh, and I turned up the two bias, meaning that it was compressing harder, and you could see that the, and I also turned up the threshold slightly, which meaning it was, it was hitting a lot harder into the compressor and therefore compressing at a higher ratio. Still sounded really transparent, even with a lot more compression going on and when I pull this back again here to the slightly faster 70 millisecond uh, attack you really the punch came back in you know even more than than I had up you know, on the previous run through with the, with the lower two bias so sounding really punchy but really solid on the low end absolutely nice and I have to say with that extra compression we're getting even more of a kind of glossy sheen on the high end and the mids um, so yeah absolutely uh, superb compressor um, and as I said if I click through these you'd get slight differences but I'm not sure that they'd come through on YouTube they're pretty pretty minor but nonetheless they they're they are there um, so let me see I think that pretty much covers it um, what I'll do though is try some of these faster settings just so you can hear what it's like um, with faster settings. So you can hear there is absolutely smashing the snare and grabbing it hard. Um, so it's it's very versatile. It is totally capable of absolutely smashing things if you want it to, uh, and really grabbing things hard if you, if you need it to. Uh, so yeah, I have to say, and even then, you know, even though it's very obviously uh, compressing hard and grabbing things in an audible way, uh, it sounded so smooth and nice. Uh, it's just impossible to make this thing sound anything other than very expensive and just oozing quality and, and, and smoothness and, and, and sheen. Fantastic job by uh, SPL Brainworks Plugin Alliance and I highly recommend it um, to anybody who uh, wants a absolutely top of the line uh, software mastering compressor or two bus compressor um, so yeah um, I, I got hold of this although it's, it says trial down here uh, I have actually bought it and uh, I will be putting the license in because uh, it's once you hear it and, and play with it for a while it becomes a kind of a must-have so <clears throat> hope you found this useful um, do subscribe to the channel if you did and please leave any comments below if you um, have any questions or um, comments or anything else that you'd like me to go over in another video. So thanks again and hope to see you next time.